Hi friend, I'm Kat. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to day four of Summer Ween. If you missed my vlog for days one through three, I will have that linked somewhere in a card and in the description down below. I'm picking up right where I left off and I'm currently in the middle of two books. I think I'm like almost exactly halfway through both of them. The first is Bury Your Gaze by Chuck Tingle, which I'm not going to talk too much about right now because I ended off my last vlog talking about it and giving my current thoughts. The book I haven't spoken to you about yet that I'm also about halfway through is Love Letters to a Serial Killer, I think it's called, by Tasha Coriel. I don't really know why I didn't talk about this. This is when I started reading like when I was going to bed at night because Barrier Gaze was freaking me out a little bit. This is not as scary, it's a thriller. And it's like a light, not scary thriller at that. And I don't know if I thought I was like just bopping between too many books in my last vlog, but I was like, I'm gonna wait to talk about this until the second vlog. I, I don't really know why I did that, but whatever. I am loving this book. like obsessed with it oh yeah i forgot to mention in my first vlog i did a challenge every day where i had to read at least 500 pages in this vlog i'm not allowed to end summer ween until i get a five star read and that just prompted my memory because i feel like this is going to be a five star read which kind of puts an early anticlimactic end to the challenge but that's okay in this we're following hannah who is just kind of struggling in life she's not really happy with her job she feels kind of stagnant and she's really not having luck dating and while this is all going on in her life there are women's bodies that are being found in a ravine and hannah starts using this case like almost as a form of escapism she gets really into looking into who the victims are really into visiting all of these different forums and things where there's a bunch of armchair detectives who are trying to figure out like what happened find connections between the women find out who the murderer is i think after four women are found a man is arrested and hannah after like a bad date writes a letter to him kind of like in a fit of rage it doesn't start off romantic she's kind of like fuck you fuck all men i hope you die but he responds and is really nice to her and she's not used to that so she decides to respond to him and they continue writing back and forth and like build a little pen pal relationship i love this i just love reading from a crazy little bitch and that's what hannah is and you can see that before she even really starts corresponding with william there are times where she like compares what she's going through to what the victims have gone through and it's just like girl it's not the same at all she's like yeah i texted max tonight and he didn't respond so like i know exactly what anna was going through in her final moments <laughs> like it's it's horrible. I'm also doing the tarot readathon this month and one of the cards I got was to read a book with a villainous character. I chose this for it. I wasn't sure if it would exactly fit, but like now reading it, I'm like, yeah, maybe she's not a stereotypical villain, but like she she's villainous but i just love reading from characters like this i don't like hannah i don't think she's a good person but i find her fascinating and i find the way she thinks fascinating and i find the things she does fascinating like she doesn't think william is innocent she's not like oh no like this sweet man he could have never done this like i know he didn't kill these four women no she's like i know he did this but that's my man look at the screen that's mine. And, I, and, 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 that's, and, that's, and that's what you're going to settle for. I'm going to stick beside him. We do know right from the jump that like things go wrong. The first chapter opens right up with her being tied up and like kept somewhere. I do have a guess as to what I think a twist is going to be. Um, but I don't really mind. This isn't one of the books that I'm like, I need a good twist, I need a good reveal. It's more about the entire story. Like it's more kind of like a character study, which I always really, really love. So I'm really, really loving it. And I'm happy now that I've spoken about it, I can read more of it. Cause I've been kind of holding myself off because I hadn't updated you yet. I don't know why I didn't just talk about it in, this, in the first vlog, but that's okay. I do have a few things to do today. I have to go do a dog walk, but nothing too crazy. So I think I will be able to read it quite a bit today. I'm I'm so excited for the books I'm going to read in this vlog because I knew I was doing this like five star challenge. I kind of saved some books I thought I was really, really going to love and I'm so excited for them. I'm about to fix my nails because they're driving me crazy. They're like seven different lengths. They're all chipped. I just need to, I don't know, every so often I need to do this. I just need to cut them all short and start fresh and new. I'm gonna do this neon orange color that I've been really enjoying lately. And normally I love to watch a show when I do my nails. That's like my time, but I just need to keep reading this book. I'm gonna put on the audiobook. I'm 
I'm just loving it. Someone is asking Hannah about William and Anna Lee was his first victim or the killer's first victim. I guess we don't know if he's a killer yet. We think he is, but I don't know. But they said, when did you know that you loved William? I didn't tell them that I'd loved him since the first time I saw Anna Lee's face. Uh, oh, that's not... This does have some humor to it, which I'm enjoying. Like, she's keeping a list guilty and not guilty. And every time, like, something happens or he does something that she thinks makes him seem guilty or not guilty, she notes it down. One of them being when she's, like, poking through his house, she finds out that he folds his underwear and she, like, adds it to the guilty side of the list. So I'm back so soon because I need to read you this passage. So you know from the synopsis already that William is released at some point, so now him and Hannah are hanging out, they're shacking up together. I thought for sure William's dark side broke through when he pulled out a pair of handcuffs one night during foreplay. I prepped myself to die, an emotional state that had lost some of its vigor after doing it so many times. My body crying wolf, only for the wolf to reveal itself to be a man who enjoyed performing cuddling kiss. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. This book is so unserious. I finished my nails. I finished my book. I finished editing my video, which I'm so happy about because when I loaded all of my clips in and I saw I had an hour of footage a part of me died inside, so I'm really happy I have it mostly done. I have a few little things left to do. So Love Letters to a Serial Killer, I don't know what I want to rate it. Like my instinct truly is to give it a five star, but was it like the most incredible book I ever read? No, but when has that stopped me before? And I don't have too much to say about it. I feel like it didn't bring up a lot of things to discuss. Like you would maybe think it would have some commentary or discussion on women in real life who do often like contact serial killers and stuff it didn't like at all but despite those things i just had such a good time reading it i found it so entertaining so like addictive i just wanted to keep coming back to it keep turning the pages it was interesting it was funny it was predictable like i said before i felt like there was gonna be a twist and i kind of predicted what it was gonna be from i won't say specifically from very early on and that is what it was but i don't really care this isn't the type of story i go in looking for like a huge twist huge reveal huge surprise it's mostly just about the ride it was almost like a car crash that you know it's going to happen like you see someone run the red light and you see another car approaching and you know they're going to crash and you just can't help but stare that's kind of what this felt like predicting the ending so i think i am gonna give it a five star but then what is this challenge? Like, is it just over? That's sad. I think we should just try to collect as many five stars as we can get. Should we make like a number goal? <laughs> How about I have to give three books five stars before I can end Summer Ween? Let's just try it. Let's see how it goes. I don't know what I want to start next. And you may say like, hey, you're halfway through Bury Your Gaze. Like, pick that up. Uh, I don't want to. I am going to finish it this week. I truly have no urge to DNF it, but I also have very little urge to pick it back up but more more than none you know but i do want to start something else so i'm deciding between strange sally diamond and the night guest i don't know what i'm in the mood for maybe i'll post a poll on instagram or actually maybe i'll post a poll in the tarot readathon discord and have y'all choose what i read next i think that's a good idea i'm writing this right beside you I guess I'm hoping it might. Ignore my hair. I just got out of the shower. I'm 7% of the way into the night guest and I just teared up. <laughs> Chapter two. This is a horror about a woman. I don't think we've learned her name yet, but basically whenever she wakes up, she's exhausted. She'll sleep for eight hours and just be bone tired the next morning. And like her legs and her arms will be really sore and she has weird bruises. So she thinks something is going on with her. She is going to see doctors and everyone is telling her that nothing is wrong with her. And not just telling her nothing's wrong with her, but like writing her off like, okay lady, you're tired, go get some rest. She finally sees a doctor that seems to be listening to her a little bit more, runs some tests and she really gets her hopes up. She's like, Okay, I'm gonna get this figured out. I'm gonna get a diagnosis and then we can move on to treating this. But then all of the tests come back negative. And the doctor says, there's nothing that she can find that's wrong with her. And she just starts crying. And she's like, 
why am I crying over being told I'm healthy? And I was just really able to relate to it. I've mentioned a couple times I have a heart condition. I started experiencing symptoms when I was like 12 or 13 years old and I didn't get a diagnosis until I think it was two years ago and I'm about to be 28. And experiencing really scary symptoms and then being told like, oh, it's just anxiety, oh, you're just out of shape, you need to exercise more, you need to drink more water, you need to eat healthier, blah, 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 and like limiting parts of your life because you're scared you'll experience symptoms somewhere. When I met with my cardiologist now and he gave me my diagnosis, I just started crying and he was like, it's okay, like it's not that scary, it's pretty simple, like you can just take a pill twice a day, like you'll be fine, we can treat this. And I'm like, I'm not sad, like, I'm so happy I just have like a name for this now. Anyway, that's the personal overshare story time of the day. I'm gonna go back to reading. Good morning, happy day five. My hair's a mess. I went to bed with it kind of damp last night and I just haven't done anything with it yet. Making my coffee, I finished my book. Sorry, I'm glad I at least gave you one update quickest read of my life by the way i showed this in my last video and i was like does this look weird like i'm just putting a nondescript unlabeled white powder <laughs> into my coffee so i put up on the screen what it was um it's rise marshmallow protein powder their protein powders are the best i've ever tasted and i've been really enjoying putting them in my coffee i really like the marshmallow it's just kind of like a basic flavor that goes with any other flavor you want to add and the i think it's like chocolate cookie blast something like that is really good too i think the night guest is around 200 pages but it reads so quickly there are several chapters that are only one sentence long as expected i loved this i just love little weird stories like this where we're following someone and just like their descent into madness really pretty much the whole time i was reading this i thought it was going to be a five star but i think it's going to be a four and a half the ending it's like a very abrupt open ending like i still i don't know what was happening to this woman i don't know what was going on i don't fully i don't want to say that i have no idea what was happening and i do like endings like that sometimes this was a little bit too much like i wish we got a little bit more i would have liked to read a longer story so like if this needed to be another 50 or so pages to have that explanation, I would have welcomed it. And because we're reading from her perspective and she's doing all of these things in her sleep and she's not even aware of what she's doing, we're not aware of what she's doing, things are alluded to. Like you can build a picture and we see the aftermath of some things that she's done. But I do wish this was like a little bit darker a little bit more gruesome, I think. I was trying to think of like how you would do that and continue to read from her perspective. And a few times to try and figure out what's happening to her at night and like what she's doing, she sets up her phone and records herself. And I really liked those parts. It kind of felt like paranormal activity-esque. So I wish that was used more and um she figures out she's going to i'm trying to like work around spoilers because obviously it's so short i don't want to give too much away but she figures out she keeps returning to this one specific spot and like maybe she could set up a camera there or something to figure out what she's doing when she gets there and then we see her watching it but other than that i really really love this i think um my assumption that this was going to be kind of reminiscent of night bitch by rachel yoder was correct so i think if you liked that one you'll like this it was just so great it was so close to being a perfect book for me this is an arc i'm reading i believe it comes out in september but i would definitely add it to your tbr if it sounds interesting the coffee of the day i am now gonna move into strange sally diamond i've also started middle of the night by riley sager on audiobook but i don't really have anything to say about it yet i like, just started it this morning I'm having a bad day and I'm really sad about it. I have the worst cramps ever and I have a fever, which always happens when I get my period. Horrible enough on its own. What's worse than just having a fever is then having to go outside in 100 degree weather and do two dog walks when you feel like that. Like, please just kill me now. I got my car back from the shop, which like, yay. I had to pay $700, sad. And they didn't fix my AC extra sad it's just not my moment you know i did get a little bit further into middle of the night i think i'm about 30 percent of the way through first can i just say i hate this audiobook narrator like his rent must have been due because he is putting his all into this audiobook into his narration 
Uh, it's a little bit too much for me. I'm not enjoying it. The way he narrates the main character is fine. There are some moments where I'm like, can you please just relax and read this normally? The way he voices the side characters, especially the other men, actually it's just everyone. I was gonna say, especially the men and children, but then I was thinking about this one woman whose voice he made really annoying as well. I'm just hating it. Luckily on my way home, when I was thinking about how much I hated listening to this, I saw the pop-up from the library that my ebook has become available. So I will probably probably switch to reading it that way. The main character is Ethan. I think in like 1994 or something like that, he was camping in his backyard with his friend Billy. He woke up, there was like a big slash in the tent and Billy was gone, never to be seen again, never figured out what happened to him. It's now I think 30 years later and Ethan is returning to his parents' home for the first time. I think he's like trying to help them get ready to sell it. And he kind of starts experiencing weird things. He has always struggled with like sleeping and insomnia since this happened, but it's getting worse. And he also keeps finding baseballs in his yard, which was how Billy, who was his neighbor, would like tell him that he wanted to come play. He would throw a baseball over in his yard. And like the sensor light that's in the yard keeps flicking on in the middle of the night, just like weird, unexplainable, creepy things. Have to say, this is pretty dull. Like it's just one of those books, I'm listening to it and I'm like, okay, this is fine, I guess. There was one thing that kind of piqued my interest and like was a little bit exciting to me, but I don't know. I don't really have that much to say about it. I know I'm not too far in, but like 30%, I feel like that's a good chunk of the book. And I just kind of feel like nothing so far. And funnily enough, I just finished watching Steph's video from the first few days of Summerween and she read this and also said it was very boring and was like, and I know I've seen a bunch of people saying it's really boring too. So like, is everyone thinking this? I kind of thought it was just me. I haven't seen anyone else's review of this yet. I've been kind of avoiding them. So I don't know. I also started Strange Sally Diamond. I didn't get too far into it at all. Honestly, when I got home before, I was just wallowing on the couch, okay? I'll be frank. As of right now, and like I said, I'm very early in, I think I've only read about like 20 or 30 pages, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I thought I was really gonna like this, and like saying that is kind of silly because um, I don't have any evidence, <laughs> or I don't have much evidence to support why I would really like this. All I've seen people say about this is it's like really, really disturbing. I really like the way it opened. We're reading from a woman and she's been kind of caring for her father and she walks in and finds out he has died in his sleep and she takes him out to the backyard and cremates him herself. And that is talked about in the synopsis. And I don't exactly remember what else is said in the synopsis. I feel like it was pretty vague. Like Sally cremates her father and then has to confront things like both past and present, something very vague like that. Um, but reading a bit further, I'm a little bit worried this is going to be like just a story of an autistic woman um, having horrible things happen to her, which I don't think would be the vibe, but I don't wanna like judge it too early because like I don't know if that's going to be the case. But just from the 20 or so pages, I'm like, is that going to be the case? I could see it being that way. I am really liking the writing and I definitely wanna see where it goes. So I am going to keep reading. Right now I'm about to head home for a little bit. My boyfriend and I are making pizza for dinner, which I'm really excited about. Um, am I the only one just now realizing that the readathon ends tomorrow? How am I finishing three books, two of which I know are not going to get five stars, <laughs> and then going on to read additional books in order to get two more five-star books? I mean, I guess my assumption was that I was going to be extending this vlog anyway, but now how long is that gonna take? I'm also going on vacation, question mark. I'm going to visit my in-laws the day after this ends. Uh, so maybe you'll come on vacay with me. Anyway, I didn't read too much yesterday. I think it was my lowest page count. I did listen to my audiobook for a while, but I only read about 50 pages in Strange Sally Diamond. And this I'm into now because Sally is one funny bitch. I highlighted three parts that just made me laugh. This is after she's kind of going through the process of explaining 
why she burned her father's dead body. And her lawyer is saying it might be a condition of the court that if I had a serious dilemma in the future, I would ask Angela, a family friend, or the police. For example, if I ever thought of incinerating a body again, Angela would assess the situation and tell me what to do. I thought that wasn't a good example to give. I was hardly going to endure this kind of fuss again. And then she's talking about how people won't stop telling her what she did was wrong. She's like, I fucking get it. Like, stop talking to me about it. You'd think it was something I had been doing for years, casually burning bodies the way they went on about it. It was one body and he had told me to do it more or less. And then when they're setting up the funeral, she's talking to the pastor, I guess. And he's like, our numbers are dwindling every year. I don't suppose you would consider attending church even on an irregular basis. And she's just like, no, it's very boring. So I just love her. She tells it how it is and she's funny. I, I'm i still confused on like where exactly this story is going. I went and checked and it is marked as a thriller on Goodreads, but like, I don't know what's gonna happen. So far it's just kind of reading like a contemporary story, but I am liking it. Did I even say happy day six? Happy day six. <laughs> Same sort of deal as usual today. I do have to head out for a bit, but I think I'm mostly just gonna hang out here. The pizza we made last night was so good. That's our favorite pizza recipe. It's like a sourdough recipe and it's also made with Greek yogurt and then in the cast iron. And the addition of the Greek yogurt, it like adds a nice amount of protein and I feel like it's so much more filling than normal pizza is. And it's just, so yeah, I have to get to reading. I kind of have some serious work to do. After I finish these three books, which like I don't even know why I'm thinking about this right now, but I am. <laughs> I don't really know what I want to read next. I'm thinking, since I'm also doing the tarot readathon, that I will pull a tarot card and have a prompt pick my next book. I fucking love Sally. Just these two moments back to back. Stop calling me a racist. Stop being one. She ate. And then I'm not like predatory. And that is what a predator would say. She ate again. This is going to be a very quick update because I truly have nothing to say about this book. Like absolutely nothing. Finished Middle of the Night, what a boring book. I think that's actually all I have to say about it. It was just so boring. I think there were two moments. One I mentioned earlier, I think that was around the 20% mark. And then one I think was around the 60, 70% mark that I was like, ooh. But then it just went nowhere, it just fizzled out. I, painfully boring. But I don't even know what to rate it because I don't have critiques i i just have nothing to say about it it was just like a nothing book two stars i'm struggling today i feel like everything i'm reading just feels so slow and it can't keep my attention middle of the night because it was boring and i was not enjoying that the other two books i'm books <laughs> books i'm reading feel like purposefully slow and I'm enjoying both of them, but I don't know. It's just been like tough for me to keep reading. Like I keep putting down both of the books. Strange Sally Diamond was keeping my attention a little bit more, but I wanted to get a little bit more through Barrier Gaze. And it's just really not doing it for me at the moment. And the chapters are super long, which is not helping. So I know it feels silly because I'm in the middle of two books, but I think I... <laughs> I may pick something else up, but I don't really know what I want to pick up. I was thinking about The Test, one of the books I picked up from the library, just because it's so short. I feel like I'll be able to get through it really quickly and it will just give me a little boost of serotonin, a little bit more motivation, like make me feel good for completing something. Ooh, should we pull our tarot card now? Let's do that. And if I can make the prompt I get work for the test, we'll read that. If not, It'll just help me choose something else. I feel like we're at a sleepover right now. All right, let's draw a card. Two of Pentacles. The prompt for this is to read a book where the character faces a big decision. Hmm. The only thing I know about the test is you're reading from a character who I think is taking like a citizenship test. Is that a decision? I feel like it's a big decision, like choosing to become a citizen in another country. Back 
so soon. I've read about 30 pages and I just have to say, I don't actually think I could have picked a better book to fulfill this prompt. This guy is taking a citizenship test. He like brings his whole family with him to the immigration office. And all of a sudden the office is overtaken by like five or six men with guns. And Adir kind of interferes with something that they did. So they focus in on him and they are going to kill someone every 15 minutes if their demands to the police are not met. We don't really know what their demands are as of right now. And they're going to make Adir choose between two people who gets shot and killed. So like, a character has to make a big decision. Like, is there a bigger decision to be made? The sun has now set, so it's a little dark in here, but I finished this and I loved it. I'm so, I just love when I make like the perfect decision for myself. It was the perfect decision to put a pause on my other books and pick this up. It was such a good palette cleanser. I mean, I don't know if palette cleanser is the right word. That kind of makes it sound like it was like light and fun and those were not the vibes but I just loved this. As someone in college who took every single psychology and sociology class that she had access to, like I just loved this. It felt like an episode of Black Mirror. Right after I talked to you, the entire book changed and it just added a whole new element to the story and I loved it. I loved the direction it went in. It was so interesting, so fast paced, like so much packed into a little tiny book and like i said the perfect book to fulfill that tarot card prompt i didn't even notice before but it says on the cover we are our choices who are you willing to be i'm really happy i randomly decided to pick this up at the library the other day because this wasn't technically on my tbr and i'm happy i read it and now i feel ready to get back into my slower reads good morning happy day seven of summer ween which is maybe the last day for me <laughs> Here's the deal. I've decided to DNF Barrier Gaze, which I know I've like barely talked about in this video. I read 50% of it in the first three days and I truly haven't touched it since. Well, that's not true. I think I read three pages last night. And I know I said in the first vlog like, oh, I really have no urge to DNF this. Like, I know I wanna keep reading it. It wasn't a lie. I meant it at the time, but now I do have the urge to DNF because I just realized I don't, care like you may wonder why i'm dnfing this and i didn't dnf middle of the night even though i found middle of the night very very boring there was still a part of me that was intrigued by what happened to billy and wanted to know what happened to billy here with this book i just don't have that like i just don't really care to see the ending of the book. I don't know if maybe this author just isn't for me, which I'm kind of sad about. I don't know why, like I just want to really like him, but I feel similarly about this to how I felt when I read Camp Damascus. And I thought maybe those feelings were maybe just because that was YA, which I normally don't really like. So I was excited when I saw this was an adult, but I just feel the same way where I just like, there are elements that are good and interesting and unique. Both of these books are very centered around being queer, which I really like. I enjoy the way he writes like the horror scenes. They're very unsettling to me, but I don't know. There's just some disconnect that I have felt with both of these books. And like, it's the last day of the readathon and I need to get a five star. And I knew this wasn't going to be I don't think anywhere close to a five star, honestly. I did finish Strange Sally Diamond. This I think I'm gonna give four stars. I did really enjoy it. And I was talking about before, like I didn't really know if this was actually a thriller or not. This is a thriller in the same way that like, Notes on an Execution is a thriller, that some of Lucinda Berry's books are a thriller, where there's not really like a big mystery. There's not really a big reveal. Um, it's more so just like focused around dark and disturbing events. And I did really like it. I liked reading from Sally's perspective and we also end up getting a different perspective later on into the book that I really enjoyed reading from probably even more than Sally's perspective just because it had a little bit more going on in it. I will say I was a little bit disappointed just because the few people I've seen talk about this over the past couple of weeks all of them are like, this is so disturbing. This is one of the most disturbing books I've ever read. And I, I hate when I have to say this about a book, 
like because it just feels so annoying and elitist <laughs> but i didn't really find this that disturbing speaking about lucinda berry like i feel like it's on par with her books which yeah like i said revolve around disturbing topics but never get like too intense or crazy honestly i think saving noah was like a little bit more disturbing to me but i get we all have different like perceptions and limits and stuff but i think my expectations were just like so high i was expecting something completely bananas and that just didn't really happen it was slower paced and like i said no big twists or reveals or like action-packed moments which i didn't mind i do think i wish there was like a little bit something more going on or it was a little bit more disturbing something to make it like a little bit more exciting i guess but i still did enjoy reading it and i would read something else from this author checking in on the prompts i have completed all of them at this point so the only thing i need to do to finish summer ween is get one more five star i've read a book in the dark i've read a thriller or horror I read a book with a sky on the cover, I read a book with five or more words in the title, and I read a book that takes place in the summer. I have no idea what I want to read next, like knowing it needs to be a five star is it's putting a lot of pressure on me. So I think we're going to do another tarot card. I do have one book in mind that I may read, so if the tarot card works for that, we'll pick it. If not, it'll just help me narrow down my choices. Okay, let's draw a card. Queen of Wands. Read a book with a strong female protagonist. Hmm. Do I have any books on my TBR that are about women killing people? <laughs> I love how that's where my mind first goes. To be honest, my mind actually went to a fantasy first, which like, hello, who am I? But I feel like the ones that would work are just like way too long for our purposes here. I'm gonna take a look through my TBR and see what I wanna do. And I'll check back in with you soon. Hey. How y'all doing? So it has quite literally been over a week since I last talked to you. I I should have known. I know I said like, oh, I'll take you on vacay with me. But the reason I said I'm going on vacation question mark is because it wasn't really a vacation. We were kind of visiting to take care of someone who's going through chemo right now. So it wasn't like happy, happy, fun time. So <laughs> there wasn't really much to vlog and stuff. And I didn't really want to vlog in the house with people it just wasn't the vibe you know i think the last time i spoke with you was on the morning of the last day of summer weed i don't even think i talked to you throughout the rest of the day i did start a book for the tarot card i pulled which was to read a book with a strong female character i believe i started the devil and mrs davenport i did end up dnfing that which i'm a little bit sad about because i was really liking it at first we're following a woman sorry the cicadas are so loud outside Following a woman, she is married, has two kids, is a stay-at-home mom, just is living that like very normal suburban life in the 60s. And then she starts experiencing visions and hallucinations and they are giving her messages about like missing people in the area. Like a local girl is missing and she receives a message for where her body is. She tells the police and her body is there. She then has another vision for who did this to her. And then the police are asking her about like a crime that happened 10 years earlier or something that they want her to try and help solve. She's just experiencing like a lot of weird things. I was really, really loving this at first because I love suburban horror. I just think really unsettling, creepy things happening in this like picture perfect scene. It just works so well for me. And it was also talking a lot about like being a woman at this time, being a mother, being a wife, the expectations that her husband places on her, um, her just dealing with her husband and stuff. Was into it, but then I just got bored and then it felt like it was going in a weird direction. There, I think he's local. There's this like local guy who's into kind of paranormal psychic stuff like this. Um, he gives like talks and stuff about it. And she ends up like meeting up with him and telling him about what's going on. And their relationship just started feeling weird. And I could see this just going in the direction of like, not even focusing on what's going on with her, but just like a, a weird, uh, sexual relationship between these, these two people. I don't know if it was gonna go in that direction, but that's what it felt like. And I was just like super bored. This was unsettling in the beginning, but then it kind of just stopped being scary. I don't know. I was just not jiving with it. I also feel like I was entering that kind of like 
end of readathon slump. So I decided to start Talk Flirty to Me by Libby Hart. I read a book by her earlier this year and I really really loved it so I wanted to read one of her backlist books and I'm so sorry I didn't update you throughout the book but this is the book to end this video because this was another five star for me. Is this like a favorite romance of all time? No, but I just had such a good time reading it and what really did it for me in this book was the tension between these two characters. You could just cut it with a fucking knife. So based on the synopsis, I thought this was going to be a romance between Piper and Sam. And Sam is Piper's brother's best friend. And she ends up recruiting him to help her out with an audiobook. She's an audiobook narrator. And she wants this really big role, really big deal, but she needs a partner. So she ends up having Sam help her. And that is true. What they don't mention in the synopsis is that this is a second chance romance and her and Sam dated previously. I think it was like seven years earlier they broke up, something like that. Once I started the book and I found that out, I was like, should I DNF this? Because I usually really don't like second chance romances. This was a second chance romance done so right. The tension created between these two, having so much history, having unfinished business, and they didn't break up for like some horrible reason. They dated throughout high school and it was just kind of like young love, right person, wrong time. Like those are the vibes which I feel like I can get on board with. So all of this history they have and then, then narrating a steamy romance audiobook together it was so good and I think it was also helped by the fact that right now I'm obsessed with Love Island and I'm sorry I hate to say it Rob is sexy Rob is so sexy to me he's like a little weirdo freak which I always love in a man like him and his fucking overalls him in underwear and cowboy boots him in the fucking cowboy outfit for the heart racing challenge I'll end there. But anyway, really obsessed with that. So I was picturing Sam as Rob the entire time. And then I was picturing Piper as Leah. And it was just, it was just working for me. I really liked how they came back together and worked through things. And like I mentioned earlier, it's not like they're ever at odds with each other. It was truly like right person, wrong time. And even the third act conflict, it's more based on like outside circumstances rather than rather than them like arguing or miscommunicating, which I always really, really like. And it was just so hot. I'm sorry. It was so hot. The tension throughout the entire book was just delectable. I think I only have one complaint and that is I wish there were more scenes of the two of them narrating this audiobook. I think we maybe only get like three or four short scenes of that and they were so good. I wish almost like between every chapter that we got a little piece of the audiobook. Like that's how good it was to me. That's how good these moments were to me. And I'm really happy I liked another book from this author. I think I gave the last book I read from her four and a half stars. She has something else coming out later this year so I'm excited to keep reading from her. I know we're ending off Summerween on a not very like Halloween-y note with a romance but okay. This was I think my most successful summer ween ever like all week. I think we had a couple duds but like nothing um nothing I'm ranting about you know nothing I hated and so many four and four and a half stars and like for me so many five stars. That's where I'm leaving you. I'm so sorry this was over a weekly and like it wasn't even worth it. You didn't even get any like extra content or anything but you know that's just that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how your summer ween went and I will see you in my next one. Bye.